so let us start with that vector algebra very easy okay first question is what is a vector okay uh, when we say what is a vector just a second so few minutes we have to wait till students come yes i do it so kindly come be the before uh, 9 uh, 7:30 and get the permission and after you get the permission you can leave you can do whatever job you want okay there are few more students to join around 3 4 extra to join so uh, till they join there will be a bit of here yeah, okay so let us see what is a vector now when i say vector i have told you yesterday only vector is the quantities that have magnitude as well as direction so if you have magnitude as well as direction it doesn't qualify to be a vector why it doesn't qualify to a vector one of the example that doesn't qualify is angle which i told you yesterday only but still i'll repeat it one of the things which does not qualify to be a vector is angle which has both magnitude and direction correct it has both magnitude and direction but it is not a vector why is it not a vector can anybody tell me why is it not a vector students who have attended yesterday please tell me why the angle it's is not, not a commutative vector. exactly it is not commutative to addition that means if i have this as x this as y this as z is the direction proper students who have attended yesterday tell me whether x y z directions are proper is the coordinate system proper here no sir it's not let us see no let us see what should be the x my thumb should be the x this should be the my y index finger should be y this should be z is it not so let us orient this towards x this towards y this towards z it is proper correct are you getting this uh, sense of this it is very proper okay yes sir one more person has joined just a second ha uh, somebody else has joined ah uh, yes surendra okay fine so you have to understand this so these are the basics people think that you can draw coordinate system just like that no you cannot okay it depends this is x this is y this is z basics from the basics we have to go so when this is x this is y and this is z okay so this is proper if i write z here then i am wrong if i write my z over here then this is wrong what is this this is negative z okay very important okay now again i have to write z here today uh, i have to go like this only i don't have any other way okay i have to keep admitting okay so i hope you will understand the students okay yeah so it is x y and z x y and z is proper okay now next is rotation now rotation is always about an axis and always right hand works a lot okay uh, right hand is uh, related to uh, generally what happens this is something uh, which is there in uh, english okay uh, whatever is left handed was considered sin okay because i am combining english as well as um, our actual knowledge our uh, engineering together because english and aptitude is also there and our vocabulary building doesn't happen just like that we have to practice vocabulary building okay so i will uh, i will keep all the vocabulary is also here whenever it is sinuous sinuous okay this was considered to be with the left hand okay then there is something called draw it you can write it separately your vocabulary english vocabulary can come others draw it is a french word for right hand keep that in mind and the person who is adroit the person who is adroit is the person who has two right hands who can work with two hands it means the person who is very very skillful this thing you have to understand okay so let it be there so why did i say this because always it is right hand rule or right hand thumb rule or right hand i will say uh, yeah this is right hand thumb rule or right hand uh, rule three uh, three finger rule okay so here in this case when rotation is there you always take right hand very important and this would be the positive direction of the uh, axis and this would be the direction of rotation very important here okay so now i will say first angle okay 
uh, I will assume that angle is a vector. If I assume angle is a vector, I will say vector uh, say A, vector A is 90 degree in the x axis. Okay. If I say vector A is 90 degree in the x axis and vector B 90 degree x axis. Okay. Positive 90 degree x axis and B is positive 90 degree y axis. If I go like this, now if I have a book for example, I will keep a book over here. Okay. Now if I rotate, I will first say A plus B. If I go with A plus B, A is 90 degree about x axis. So the direction, positive direction is this way. So my book will come over here. Correct. Okay. Or that thing will come over here. This would be the uh, A. Then 90 degree with respect to y axis. Y axis is here and with respect to this 90 degree. What is the direction? Direction would be like this. Correct. So this would go and fit over here. So this is A plus B. Now let us see what is B plus A. If you consider B plus A, B is, this is my initial, uh, this one, keep in mind. Okay. This particular one is the initial one. So B plus A, B is with respect to Y axis 90 degree first. So Y axis is here, 90 degree, it will go down. This would be the first one. Next, X axis 90 degree. So it will come and reach over here. So this is B plus A. So A plus B is not equal to B plus A. B, uh, B plus A, it is not commutative. So in addition, vector quantity must be commutative. That is A plus B should be equal to B plus A under the application of parallelogram law. Now you say parallelogram law, but it is generally any vector uh, algebra thing or any vector, um, uh, what do you say, uh, any vector functions if you have, it should be amenable to that commutative, whether you multiply vector cross product, dot product, anything, okay. A plus B should be equal to A or B plus A or A dot B should be equal to B dot A and all those things. If that doesn't happen, it is not a vector. Although angle is not a vector, angular velocity is a vector, keep that in mind. Why angular velocity is vector? Because this relates, what is angular velocity? Angular velocity omega is d theta by dt. Now what is d theta? Whenever you say differentiation, differentiation means limit delta t tending to 0 delta theta by delta t. So when delta t tends to 0, delta theta becomes very small. For small angles, this can be considered as a vector because it is commutative in the small angle. Okay. There are some more points which I will do in mechanics further. We will see that later on when we see rotation. Okay. I have one more student coming here. I will admit that person first. Yes. Okay. So here, one of the things what we have to understand is that although angle is not a vector, my angular velocity is a vector because we are dealing with small angles. Okay. There are more to it. We will go further. Okay. But I brought here adroit and droit. Droit means right hand. Write it in your vocabulary sheets. Make a different book for vocabulary because vocabulary doesn't come just like that. Okay. Vocabulary goes step by step it goes. So I will go, uh, I will do vocabulary also. I will do aptitude also. Aptitude is a separate class. But still, vocabulary goes day, daily, it will go. So, droit means right hand. Okay. Adroit means the meaning of this is skillful. The person who is skillful is adroit. Okay. Sinuous, left hand generally. Okay. Which is not right. Okay. Sinuous was used by Reynolds. You know Reynolds? Who doesn't know Reynolds? Correct. Reynolds was doing that pipe experiment. And when he was doing pipe experiment, for certain low velocity, he was getting a straight line, he called laminar. And then for some higher velocity, the pipe, the die in the pipe was going like this. And after some time, it was totally turbulent sometimes. Okay. So this he called it as sinuous. In his original paper, he called this, uh, the one which is going from uh, laminar to uh, turbulent that particular way is called sinuous sinuous means something we cannot understand okay 
so that's how reynolds exp explained that in his paper original paper i have that copy with me okay now next next let us see what is equality and equivalence of a vector okay two vectors are equal if they have the same magnitude and direction in same dimensions it's very important to have in same dimension you have the same magnitude and direction then it's called it is called equal vectors okay two vectors are equivalent if they produce if the same effect is produced okay two vectors are equivalent if the effect produced by them is the same okay so this you can understand does it not so i can have a force acting at a point okay being replaced by a moment vector okay for example if i have a beam okay i have say a cantilever beam here and then i have a force here okay this force with the cantilever beam can be i'll put a 3d 3d here just a second okay i'll put 3d here so that it will help you out okay so if i have a say a cantilever beam like this okay so why 3d there is a reason why i have gone with 3d okay so i have a cantilever beam here okay and then this is my fixed fixture here okay and here i have a load p now this load p can be replaced by a vector okay another vector which is which creates the same effect okay on this cantilever beam i'm sorry my and my drawing is a bit poor fine this can be replaced by a vector which is uh which is in the direction i will tell you yeah i can replace this by a vector m here correct i can replace by a vector m which is equal to p or r crossed with p which is a moment vector okay i can replace with r crossed with p vector correct moment vector is the distance from that point to the thing which is given here so it is this rotation is important how cross product works i will tell you later on so this moment works here okay here generally in two dimensions we put a moment like this correct what do we do in two dimensions if this is a cantilever beam and there is a p which is acting here we say there is a clockwise moment which is acting here this is equal to having the moment in this direction okay so all these basics i will tell you so it can be replaced by a force can be replaced by some other vector so this is equivalent this p and this m is equivalent so i can replace p by a moment vector okay so that is called equivalence i hope you get that equivalence equal to different things okay next one also this can be the uh, same effect can be wrote by having if this is uh, p here i'll remove this p and i'll replace over here 2p that also will produce the same effect okay so if that produces the same effect over here you have to understand where i am concentrating okay because otherwise if it is coming here the slope changes at the other end all those things we will see but over here where we am concentrating the effect is almost the same okay so these kind of things is called equivalence now there are three types of situations associated with equivalence of vectors first one a vector may be moved anywhere in space without change in effect produced these are called free vectors these are called free vectors example moment of a couple couple is two forces acting right these two forces acting at a distance can be moved anywhere in the plane how that can be done we will see when we do couple okay so that is called a free vector okay next there is something called vector which can be moved along the line of action these are called transmissible uh, vectors i'm sorry i have used forces there which is a wrong thing it has to be said vectors transmissible vectors okay we have to go in general way is it not so transmissible vectors example forces acting on a rigid body so if you have a rigid body whether the force acts over here or over here doesn't matter okay it produces the same effect because rigid body doesn't deform in case of deformable body it is not so if it is elastic or plastic which is deformable when you say deformable it can be elastic deformation it can be plastic deformation so both the cases it is not a rigid body in that case you cannot have a transmissible force okay next a vector 
cannot be moved anywhere in space that is the last case okay where vector cannot be moved anywhere in space correct and uh, uh, without change in fx example forces acting on a deformable body okay you cannot change it you have to stay at the same place okay next now let us go with some more things okay now let us define what is a vector okay let us understand much more about vectors okay so vector if i have in cartesian coordinates very simple okay but uh, one of the main things for uh, cartesian coordinates one of the main thing which we have to understand is we have to repeat what we know then only we can understand what we do not know one of the main mistakes we do in studying is that we go for much advanced without understanding the basics and sometimes we fail in understanding the advanced because we have a gap in our basics so today what i am going to do is i am going to fill those gaps which you have okay so let us see so if you have a vector for example okay if i say a particular coordinate coordinate can be anything i am writing x and y it can be velocity coordinates it can be acceleration coordinates it can be force it can be enthalpy entropy anything it can be okay so now if i have a point here another point here 1 and 2 these are the points i have or i'll say p and q that will be better okay let me have p and q these are the two vector two points we have so if you want to join this point i can join this point with a vector so this vector has a magnitude which is replaced uh, represented by pq okay so this vector i'll say pq okay although it seems as a displacement vector but it can be anything keep that in mind okay so it depends on the coordinates basically okay so now this if i put the z direction is the z direction proper students is the z direction proper yes or no tell me whether the z direction is proper yeah yeah yes no it's wrong it's a wrong z direction z direction should be in this direction correct see again are you convinced with this don't put wrong directions basics is anybody not convinced with this have i done any mistake in putting the z direction x y and z right hand rule okay so if i have this z direction here this is minus z whatever be that is okay so we have p okay with x1 y1 comma z1 and q with say x2 comma y2 comma z2 okay now vector if i say v I, instead of pq let us uh, put it as v okay vector v okay don't uh, consider it velocity it's anything okay vector v can be written as vxi plus vyj plus vz k where vx vy vz these are called scalar components very important these are called scalar components these are not vectors these are the scalar components of the vector v and this i j k these i j and k are called unit vectors very simple scalar components and unit vectors makes a vector very important okay so now what is vx vx is given as x2 minus x1 okay you can say uh, yeah x2 minus x1 and vy is y2 minus y1 and vz is equal to z2 minus z1 very simple now here one thing we have to understand generally while taking slope or something like that we'll take dy by dx now when you say dy by dx what does that mean it means always y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 very important okay this has to be understood d means final minus initial okay so the same thing we will use here also further okay next now here when you say magnitude of a vector okay when you say magnitude of a vector these are all some things which you know but i am just making a today's basics class okay magnitude of vector what is magnitude of vector how long this vector 
is that's what it matters okay magnitude of vector is square root of vx square plus vy square plus vz square this is what is called the magnitude of a vector clear easy correct so that actually means the distance how long that vector is how big the vector is in terms of scalar magnitude of a vector is a scalar keep that in mind okay next now this magnitude shows how big it is okay magnitude and then the direction how to find out the direction direction is referred to by unit vector okay so we will see what is unit vector unit vector is nothing but say unit vector v is actually given by vector v divided by magnitude of vector v it actually gives a direction okay for example if i have a vector say a vector a which is given by say 5x plus 6 uh, 5x uh, or i'll say okay 5i plus 6j plus 10k so what does it mean it means some vector in the xyz direction correct so it means some vector in the xyz direction now in this xyz direction here this has two components one is magnitude another one is the direction so what is magnitude magnitude is a which is equal to square root of 5 square plus 6 square plus 10 square whatever the answer is i am not calculated not important okay you know how to do it okay now this is the magnitude fine what is the direction direction is given as a cap which is equal to the vector which is equal to 5i plus 6j plus 10k divided by the square root of 5 square plus 6 square plus 10 square this gives my unit vector very very important this gives me my unit vector vector i hope you understand the students so my a vector can be written as magnitude of a that much magnitude in the direction a so this is how also i can write my vector magnitude and a direction so vector has both magnitude and direction magnitude is referred by magnitude and direction is referred by unit vector any doubts here students So there are a number of um, exams where this has been asked. What is a unit vector in this direction? So that's it. Okay, unit vector is this. It shows the direction. And what is the magnitude of unit vector? One. You can check it out. Okay. Once what you do, you uh, find out five. You find out this in terms of i plus j plus k. Okay. Some uh, k. Okay. So you will have some uh, some a value here some value here some value here and when you take the magnitude of the unit vector this will always be equal to one okay unit vector is always unity it shows direction okay to show the direction one is enough okay so that's it any doubts here students let me pause for a bit no doubts i can go further fine okay let me see if i have some messages a second if any students are face, facing different difficulty so if you're facing difficulty in coming to the class call me i will not be able to see the messages okay so this is one thing you have to understand you cannot i can you cannot see my i cannot see your messages okay so this is one thing we have to now next next point in vector algebra is multiplication by scalar next point is multiplication by scalar we have understood what is vector this is the first vector algebra um, no this uh, operation we are doing okay that is multiplication by scalar what happens when you multiply by scalar see if there is a vector say any vector okay say we will use a smaller one we will say vector a is equal to uh, 5i plus 4j we will use this so that calculation is easier okay now when you multiply by scalar what happens if i say scalar multiply this uh, vector a into some scalar say 2 so what is going to happen this becomes 
10 i plus uh, 8 j that is it ok. So, this is multiplication by scalar quantity. So, when multiplication by a scalar quantity happens what is happening is scaling what is happening is scaling you scale it bigger or smaller for example if you use uh, say 0. Uh, 0.5 so if i use 0. 0.5 into a 0. 0.5 is a scaling quantity 0. 0.5 into a so what happens uh, you will get it as 2.5 i plus 2 j so you will get that that is what happens with multiplication with the scalar there is another thing which happens okay the one which happens is scaling and direction reversal direction reversal what can happen is not direction change direction reversal for example instead of 2 if you have minus 2 or if i say minus 1 into not this into into a if i have it's not a dot product it's not a cross product it's a multiplication by scalar if it is minus then this becomes minus 5i plus 4j so what is happening the direction is changed direction is reversed this is minus a so when you multiply by minus 1 the direction changes so and minus uh, whenever the scalar quantity if i have a and then I, if i say a vector b or a vector yeah vector b which is some scalar quantity s into a so what is happening when uh, when s is greater than 1 the vector is scaled up or enlarged correct s is less than 1 what happens scaled up scaled down or reduced in size correct if s is uh, say lesser than 0 but greater than 1 ok greater than minus 1 then what happens scale down and reversed and reversed not d reversed ok if s is uh, less than if s is less than ok uh, minus 1 then it is scaled up and reversed very important you know this but still we are going with revision of the basics that is it okay, whatever you know we are revising any doubts here students write it down as I say ok as much as you can if you miss something uh, anyhow I have the recordings I will share this uh, video with you I will create a I have a, a Google Drive in that Google Drive I will give you the uh, link to that Google Drive once that one week of uh, class is over once students start paying I will give you the link of that and this also I can give you I can share you uh, in your WhatsApp group I will put this uh, PPT also ok so this is what happens ok next any doubt still here students no fine now we will go with addition I am going a bit fast because these are things which you know addition of vectors very easy one so if I have two vectors say p which is given by say p1 i plus p2 j plus p3 k and then I have another vector q which is given by q1 i plus q2 j plus q3 k ok now we have two vectors now p plus q what is it what is p plus q vector addition this means it means p1 plus q1 of i plus p2 plus q2 of j plus p3 plus q3 of k very simple ok another point this p1 and p2 if it can be represented as two vectors say there is a vector say p and then there is a vector q these two vectors can be is represented 
by two sides of a parallelogram then the diagonal represents the resultant r which is equal to p plus q so r vector this r vector is equal to p plus q very important okay so the parallelogram so if you can draw the uh, figure to the scale then you can get what is the resultant both in direction as well as magnitude okay provided you should write p and q in the proper way okay then we can do it okay no doubts let us see some more things on this okay any doubts here students till now no right no now let us take two vectors okay p and q so we will have this uh, say this is p and this is q two vectors and we have to add it now always when we have to write uh, draw and all those things sometimes it is uh, easy but for me i am a person who wants everything in calculations okay writing i am a bit lazy okay i cannot wait to get the answers so let us see how to do it okay so this is r now let me say i will draw a thing here i will draw it perpendicular here okay and let me name it let me name this as o origin okay uh, this point which represents the head of p okay this point which represents the head of p let me name it a then i will name this as uh, b then i will represent this as c okay and this i will represent as d okay so these are the points which i am replacing there is a vector here Okay, the two vectors. Okay, now, now let us see what is R. What is R? R is P plus Q because P and Q are the what are they? They are the sides of a parallelogram. R is the diagonal, so it represents fine. So here, if I represent it properly, what is R? R can be written as OB if it is in that dimensions. If it is force, force dimension. If it is velocity, meters per second dimensions like that. so ob square the magnitude we are worried about the magnitude now ob square the lengths are represented okay ob square can be oc square okay i will leave this uh, lines but uh, generally we have to put that line but i leave it just for the sake okay oc square plus bc square why because it forms a right angle triangle so you see O B C is a right angle triangle. Fine. So since O B C is a right angle triangle, O B square, which is a hypotenuse, is O C, which is adjacent. I can say, in terms of trigonometric thing, this is opposite. I can say if this is theta. Okay. I will call this as phi. Okay. And I will call the angle between P and Q as theta. Okay. So OB square is equal to OC square plus BC square, correct? Or I can say this as also OB square is equal to OA plus AC the whole square plus BC square. Agreed? OA plus AC. OC is OA plus AC. OC doesn't mean others collection. It means this O and C. Okay? So OA plus AC square is equal to BC square. Done. This I will put it as equation number one. Next, if I take this theta, this theta, okay, if I take this theta, then my cos theta is actually equal to what is cos adjacent by hypotenuse, right? So I will take adjacent by hypotenuse. Cos theta is AC. Divided by, I am sorry, cos theta. I'll write like this. It can be here also. This theta is actually equal to this theta also, since this theta and this theta because these are parallel lines, correct? So this and this theta are the same. So what happens? This cos theta can be written as AC by AB, correct? I can write it as AC by AC by AB. I have to see it is a right angle triangle. I can't do it from here. is not right angle triangle we have to take the right angle triangle here which is the right angle triangle this is the right angle triangle so in this right angle triangle cos theta is ac divided by ab correct so ac divided by 
AB if I take, then I can write AC as equal to AB cos theta. Please write it down as I write here. Okay. And then I can write this AC as equal to since A to B, A to B is actually equal to O to D. Correct. So I can write this as equal to OD cos theta. What is OD? OD is Q. Correct. So it is Q cos theta. So my AC can be written as Q cos theta. This I will write it as 2. I think somebody has asked me, asking me the permission. I will come. I will give them the permission and then I will come back. Okay. So Umesh Chandra. Oh, there are people who have gone. Fine. Probably. Okay. So, yes. So, I think some people are feeling it is easy. Okay. Fine. Then. Okay. This is actually easy. Okay. AC is equal to Q cos theta. Very important. Similarly, if I write uh, in the similar fashion, if I write sin theta, sin theta can be written as BC divided by AB. That means my BC can be equal to AB sin theta. Correct. Or this is equal to AB. If I say, uh, I'm sorry, I think I made a mistake. Uh, this is not OD. AC is equal to, what did I write? Just a second students. I made a mistake somewhere. Um, let me come back. Cos theta is equal to AC by AB. AC is AB cos theta. AB is equal to OD. Fine. Done. Okay. Now, if I consider this, it is BC by uh, BC by AB. Correct. That's correct. Okay. So, BC is AB sin theta. AB is actually OD sin theta. This is equal to Q sin theta. Fine. So, now this 2 and 3, we are going to apply in 1. And we will see what is the results. Okay. Have you written this down, students? If you have not written, you can stop me and you can um, write it. Okay. Then only I will proceed. It's understanding that is very important. Okay. So, now let us write. Now, what we had last, we had OB square is equal to OA plus AC, the whole square plus BC square. And if you see it there in that figure, you can write this as, you can write this as OB is actually R. So, we can write R square. What is OA is P, you can see that. Okay. Plus AC is Q cos theta the whole square plus what is BC? BC is Q sin theta the whole square. Now, when we proceed this way, we will get this as P square plus 2PQ cos theta plus Q square plus here also Q square cos square theta. I am sorry. Q square cos square theta plus Q square sin square theta. Okay. Now, we know cos square plus sin square is equal to 1, is it not? So, this can be written as P square plus 2 PQ cos theta plus Q square. What does that mean? My radius or the, not radius, I am sorry, my resultant R is equal to square root of P square plus 2 PQ cos theta plus Q square. So, this is my Sorry, resultant R. I hope you get the students. Okay. So, the resultant R is actually equal to square root of P square plus 2 PQ cos theta plus cos Q square. Now, this R is the magnitude. Keep in mind. What is it? It is magnitude. It is not the, uh, it does not give the vector. It is only the magnitude that it gives. Okay. How to get the directions? Have you, have you understood this student here? Is it, uh, have I gone too much? No, right? It's simple, is it not? I assume it is simple. Anything you want to ask, I'll give you a break, small break, one minute break. Okay, so I'll go back, I'll tell you again how it has come. Okay, just see it again, how the things have come. I've taken 
uh, this triangle, uh, the ABC as a triangle first. First, I have taken OBC and then I have said OB square is equal to OC square plus BC square. Then I have taken ABC as a triangle and then in the ABC triangle cos theta is AC by AB, sin theta is BC by AB, BC by uh, AB, correct, that is sin theta. So like that when we go, we get this, okay. So BC is Q sin theta, AC is Q cos theta. So you may have to derive this in a number of places. You don't think that uh, uh, gate, if you clear, it is enough. No, it's not enough. Afterwards, you have to uh, go for interviews. In interviews, these simple small derivations are asked. Or even in your uh, um, campus interviews sometimes, this, uh, this is asked. If the uh, campus interview uh, company wants students with the knowledge, Okay, with basic understanding of the subjects, you, 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 they may ask these questions also. Okay, vectors are something which is very, very basics, will be asked a lot of times. Okay, so that is important. Okay, so here, then we uh, put it, plug it in here. You take a square of this and then this one. So you get cos theta, cos square theta plus sin square theta is 1. So you get P square plus 2P cube cos theta plus Q square. So magnitude R. Now, how do you find out the direction? Yes, yeah, students, how do you find out the direction? Can you tell me? How to find out the direction? Direction is what? Direction is, so if you have this, say, I'm sorry, I'll draw it properly. So we have this Q, this P, this is a parallelogram. Tell me if I'm going fast. I sometimes go fast to, uh, if students are feeling it easy, I go it far, go fast. So this is theta, we know this, correct? This is theta, correct? Now if this is theta, this is phi. So direction represents what is this phi, that is very important. This phi is what we have to find. find. Can you find out this phi? Easy, is it not? What is this phi? We have said this is uh, this was B, this was C, correct, this was A, this was O, this was D, correct. So now if that is the case, now my direction is finding this phi, this can be done by tan. So tan phi can be written as BC by OC, this can be written as BC divided by OA plus AC. So this can be written as tan phi is equal to q sin theta divided by p plus q cos theta. Very important. Easy. Correct. So we can find out the direction like this. Very easy. Similar way we can do the direction by using sin phi. You can use it cos phi also. So there are, there are some books which gives you cos phi relation. There are some books which gives you sin phi relation Okay, to find out the direction. But when you know the derivation, you can do anything, okay, whether sin phi, cos phi or anything, okay. If these kind of simple things are asked in gate, then also you can do it, okay. I hope it is clear. So it is important to do the derivation, okay. Uh, one of the main thing we think is that if you remember the formula, it is enough. The present students are have felt that because I have gone with the derivations. Because I did the derivation, they could solve a lot of questions this time in gate, okay. One of the students this time is scoring around uh, 80 marks out of 100, okay. There is another student who is scoring around 60 marks out of 100, okay. We had, uh, this time we had less number of students because of COVID. I took a long decision to uh, go to online. So in the previous time, I had around 40 students when I was doing a offline class, okay. When I started with my online class, this time I had only 7 students and in that 7, around 3 to 4 are clearing, okay, in mechanical, okay. So that is very important, okay, so I have done very well, okay, even in the first time when I started, uh, one student got into IIT Madras, okay, so this has worked, I am, I am guiding students from around 2011 onwards, okay, so I know which works, what does not work, okay, so this is very important, and also our professors who are coming, they are also the people who have worked in various uh, coaching institutes, okay, and more than like Manoj sir has around uh, uh, two to three years previous to this, he was uh, teaching in uh, engineering made easy in uh, Chandigarh. Okay, 
there is another uh, person uh, murli who was working in gate forum okay so there are a lot of people who are working in lot of industry a lot of uh, cl uh, coaching classes as well as they have academic uh, um, background industrial background those are the people who will be teaching you and everybody says the same thing this method what i am using is the best one you get the basics okay fine next is it clear students any doubt here till now i want you to talk yes or no yes students please respond Understood. Understood. No, is it difficult or is it uh, tough? Or is it easy? I'm sorry, I'm using the same jargon. Okay, easy, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Next, next we will see about resultant. Okay, resultant of a vector, or uh, let us not go with resultant. Let us go with dot product. And from the dot product, next we will see the resultant. Okay. So what is dot product? Dot product is related to work product also. Tomorrow we will do a uh, lot of questions. We will do. We will solve a lot of questions. Okay. So we will see dot product. It is also called work product. What is it called? Dot product or work product? Why it is called a work product? Because it is related to work. Correct. Right? So dot product. If I say If I say a vector a, which is represented by a one i plus a two j plus a three k, and there is another vector b, which is represented by uh, b two b two i plus sorry b one i plus b two j plus b three k. These are the two vectors. So if I have dot product a dotted with b, if I say it will be a one b one plus a two b two plus a three b three. You see here, this is a number. There is no i j k. There is no directions here. It is a number that comes. Very very important. Dot products gives you a number. So since it gives a number, it is also called a scalar product because it gives you scalar. This operation gives you a scalar. So it is called a scalar product. Okay. So a dotted with b is this particular thing. Now one more point. Why it is important? It is important in terms of work product. Why work? Work is not a vector. It's a scalar. So work is f dotted with dr, correct? Dr is a vector, f is a vector, not only in r. This is a vector. So dot product, you will get f dot dr. You will get the vector. Very simple. Okay. Now another point here. Okay. What happened to i, j, and k? Why? Where did it go? It went off because when I dotted i dotted with i. the answer is 1 when i dot i uh, similar way this is equal to j dotted with j plus k uh, is equal to k dotted with k when you have similar one not cross dot i'm sorry dotted with k it is all equal to 1 so i dotted with i is equal to j dotted with j okay is equal to k dotted with k is 1 Whereas i dotted with k is equal to j dotted with k is equal to i dotted with j is equal to zero. So when I multiply this, I did this multiplied with this, this multiplied with this, this multiplied with this. But when I say i dotted with j, I got it zero. That's why this thing comes. Okay. So when you take the dot product, what happens? You get a scalar quantity. For example, if I have a vector, for example, I will say a vector is equal to two i plus three k plus one j, and then b is equal to say three i plus one k minus one j. If I have this dot product, is simple: a 
dotted with B. I am not doing simple things. Okay, I want you to practice those two threes are six, and then three ones are three, one minus one minus one. So this is nine is the answer. I hope you get that, students. So like this, we do the dot product. Very very easy one, and it's a work product. Okay, so next. Now dot product is very much related to unit vector, and also the resultant. How it is result? Uh, how resultant and dot product are related? We will see in a moment. Okay. Any doubts? Till now. Sir, three ones are three, right? I'm sorry, Baba. You have written four. Yes, 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 yes. I am sorry. My bad. Sometimes I forget multiplication. Okay. <laughs> yes. So it is eight. Okay. So I hope you get the uh, things. Okay. So six plus three minus one is eight. So that is the answer. Okay. So this is one of the important things. Uh, what happens in gate that we do silly mistakes. Okay. Do not do silly mistakes. Okay. And jot down what are the mistakes you do. Generally, when you practice a lot of things, you will uh, know what are the types of mistakes you do. Okay. Jot down that. Okay. Gate or any competitive exam, it needs a lot of practice. Okay. Practice. in a personal level okay not in general level to see what mistakes are done we have to not repeat that mistake next time to go slow it all comes by practice okay fine next once that is there next we will see a uh, resultant of it resultant of it not resultant i'm sorry component of a vector not resultant so resultant we we have seen all components of a vector or scalar components of a vector we can see now what is meant by component if i have just a second student there is a message which i have got oh vivan there is a problem with the video quality is it you can directly tell me Yeah, to yeah. 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 Yeah
okay so i can say magnitude of p into cos theta x here into i i'm sorry i missed this here cos theta x into i plus magnitude of p into cos theta y into j so i and j so now here this px and py are represented in terms of cosines correct so here this px is equal to p cos theta x there is a cosine here okay then py is equal to magnitude of p into cos theta y now this uh, method, yeah tell me uh no nothing like in between it had got poor again now it's it came uh, proper now fine fine, fine, fine. Mm -hmm. uh, there might be a trouble uh, i don't know okay let me see okay please give me a feedback like that okay if it is getting poor tell me it is getting poor okay anyone okay you can message me also okay so now p into cos x okay so now this p cos x i will write it as l and py is equal to p into m now this l m and if it is n okay these are called direction cosines very important these are called direction cosines and actually my direction cosine if you consider okay uh, my px is actually equal to p magnitude p or the uh, or the vector p dotted with i py is actually equal to vector p dotted with the j and what is this dot dot gives you magnitude of p dotted with into l okay and this gives magnitude of p into m or if i say p z this implies magnitude of p dotted with k this is equal to magnitude of p into l m n where l m n are direction cosines very important this people don't understand a lot of times very important in vector calculus also okay so l m n are direction cosines now let us see further have you written this down students okay so we will stop it here the because the time is up we will stop it here tomorrow we will see some more algebra with respect to direction cosines okay there are number of questions that comes and you will understand the basics very nicely okay and we will do some gate problems also